The WaveShare RP2350 Touch AMOLED 1.43 is the best circular microcontroller display I've reviewed yet, with a stunning display and amazing options for connectivity. Thank you to WaveShare for the review device and to Wolf SSL who have sponsored this episode. Please check them out. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm John, your concierge to the world of the Raspberry Pi Pico, Pico 2, robotics, IoT, and other fun tech. Remember to subscribe and join the community. I've looked previously at WaveShare's RP2040 1.28 display in both touch and not touch forms. This new RP2350 display is the great step forward, not only in for being fully circular, but also having mounting pivots. This makes it much easier for me to embed it in my own projects and yours too. Connectivity has stepped up a notch too, with a combination of some JST-XH connectors for UART and I2C, plus two banks of one millimeter header sockets, plenty of GPIO for any project. Without libraries, examples, and documentations, then the hardware is really useless. And I'll take a look at those too and create a simple project for this device. If you like this video and it helps your learning or your projects, then why not drop me a cash tip using that super thanks button below the video, or alternatively, there's a payment link in the description. I'm saving these up to get myself to the open source conference in San Francisco. That's a long way from here, and I'd appreciate your help in getting me there, and I hope to see you all there too. Thank you very much for watching. Please do hit that like button and please subscribe for more. This video is sponsored by Wolf SSL. I've got a board here with the potential to be an interface panel with internet connectivity using an RM2 module. I'll need to secure its communication, whichever protocol I'm using, MQTT or HTTPS, for example. I'll want to validate the identity of the device and have trust that it's running my firmware. These are all use cases for Wolf SSL and their set of security libraries, which secure our embedded and IoT services. Wolf SSL libraries are available under GPL version 3 or full commercial support models. Go check out Wolf SSL today. I've looked at a few WaveShare touch panels now, and this one moves on a little bit. This is a nice circular panel at 46 millimeters in uh, diameter with 466 pixels. It's an AMOLED display, which is really bright and really clear. And of course, driven by our friend, the RP2350. Let's have a look in the box. WaveShare's RP2040 Touch Element um, 1.43 LED. Let's just have a look what we get in the box. So this is a little bit of bigger touch than one of the others I've, I've looked at previously. Um, so we get, of course, our touch panel, which looks like that. Now that this is 1.43 inches, or what's that? Just over, um, just over about 44 millimeters across. That's a little bit bigger than the previous uh, touch panels with the RP2040 that I looked at with the uh, from WaveShare, and there's one of them there. And as you can see, we've got a bigger touch panel, which makes it actually more useful as a touch panel in my view. And of course, it's got the RP2350 processor on the there. On the back, we've got uh, USB-C, of course. Uh, we've got a couple of little connectors. Uh, one of them's for um, I2C, I2C connector coming out there. And we've also got a um, UART connector coming off the back there. We've got a battery for the real-time clock capability. And there are also two um, sets of connectors there. Now, those connectors are one millimetre uh, uh, size, a pin headers. So they're a little tricky to use. Here I've got a one millimetre to 2.54 adapter. So um, I can just ping in and get some of those out. But, but yeah, that, that's a little bit tricky to get off. But it is useful. There's a great deal of connectivity on there. There are a couple of switches on there as well. Uh, obviously, uh, boot cell and reset. And of course, 
we, the box also comes with uh, connectors. So we have connectors for those two connectors down the bottom, so for our I2C and for our UART. So this screen is 46 millimeter diameter with 466 by 466 pixels. It's driven by a CO5300 display driver, which is a display driver I've not come across on the other WaveShare devices. And similarly with the touch driver, which is the FT6146. Of course, there's libraries for these and I'll come back to those in, in a bit. Off the back of the board, we've got USB-C. We've got a battery connection. If you want to run it off battery, you've got RTC battery as well, because there's a real time clock on board. And there is a micro SD card. Um, I couldn't find it for a bit. It's actually on the side in between the PCB and the display. Um, so yeah, but really good. It's a spring loaded uh, micro SD card reader. So really quite useful. You've also got connectors um, that are just T um, XHs for UART 0 and uh, I squared C 0. And there's those two banks of uh, 2 by 7 uh, header pins or uh, sockets for female sockets for header pins. They are one millimeter pitch, which uh, means, you know, adapting into a breadboard is a bit tricky. But certainly for connectivity on any uh, PCB, that's actually really quite useful. And there are lots of um, G GPIO that we've got coming out of those two, which is really handy. Certainly enough that connecting up something like an RM2 module to give this uh, board Wi-Fi is really simple and would be easy to do. Now, unfortunately, the thing that isn't on the back here is SWD, single wire debug. That is not broken out anywhere, so there is no way we can connect our Raspberry Pi debug probe or any other debug probe or any other SWD flashing device to the to the uh, board, which is kind of annoying. So this is the demo that comes out of the box. We can see we've got the information here on what's going on in the device and some of the stats and information. Yeah, all sort of good, nice, responsive. Uh, screen as always and look I can even change the brightness of the level of the screen which actually means, makes it a little bit easier to actually do photo photography from it. We've of course got an IMU on board so let's just show you the IMU so I'm getting data as I'm rotating it and here's a full LVGL demo so we've got buttons on here to push we can scroll up and down through pages we can switch over to graphs and look at some of the graphs. Look at those even moving graphs, all those sort of LVGL toys to play with um, available and all work. And with a slightly larger screen, it's actually quite easy to, uh, to navigate and play around on these. So nice. Now, all of those demos rely on libraries and the quality of those libraries. And what's that like? Well, there are really three libraries which are actually quite nicely structured that support all of that. BSP, which is basically all of the drivers for the device itself, LVGL, and there's a separate set of libraries and examples for the, uh, the micro SD card. The BSP library is very similar to what we had for the 2.8 inch uh, square display. Um, here it's slightly different to uh, the drivers within it, but it's all packaged nicely in a single module, giving us battery levels, the touchscreen, the display itself, the real-time clock, and the IMU. I really like this, and it makes it really easy to actually integrate with. For the LVGL support and the uh, examples, they're using version 8.4. That's a little bit behind, but 8.4 is the most recent release on the uh, 8 version. Um, they've put a local copy in there with their own configuration put into the top of that library. Not entirely what I'd do. I'd probably use the GitHub release, but that will work too and is fine. And we've got a FAT file system onto the micro SD card, and that's interfaced is via um, four bit interface, so it's actually relatively quick. So, of course, I've built some test uh, projects for this and tried it out and see if these libraries actually work. 
and actually they do. It's relatively easy. So I've used an LVGL example that's doing a bit of animation. And this is a demo that you've probably saw me run onto the RP2040 Touch. I've run it on the 2.8 inch display and the 2 inch display as well. And actually porting that to this is was relatively easy and quick to get up and running. So the hardware here on this device is actually really good. It's nicely constructed with great interfacing. And actually physically it's good as well. Being fully circular and having uh, mounting points on the back makes it really easy to actually embed it in your project. My one complaint from the hardware point of view is that lack of SWD, single wire debug. I really do want to miss that. The libraries are actually really good. They're nicely structured and easy to use. The only problem I had when I was playing with it with my examples is I screen rotation, uh, which should be there in hardware, doesn't seem to be implemented. It's actually taking a rotation value, but doing absolutely nothing with it. And from an example point of view, there is a good number of examples shipped with this, which makes it easy to actually understand what the architecture is doing. They've not tried to put them all into one example that's super example that's really complicated to uh, understand. I really like that. Broken out simple examples is the way to go. The code could be better commented, but I'd say that about everything. This kit is outstanding from a hardware perspective. I'm hugely impressed with the amount of connectivity provided in such a small space. The quality of the AMOLED screen is outstanding too. I only have one small concern. My common moan on these boards that they have not brought out the SWD port. Single wire debug is how I flashed the RP2350 and debugged my code. Great hardware is only half the story though. The other part is the library support and the examples to get things going. Wayfier's libraries are improving and the setup of these libraries and examples are really good on this one too. I could get my example up and running in less than an hour. If you'd like this video and it helps your learning or your projects, then why not drop me a cash tip? Remember there's that super thanks button below the video or alternatively there's a payment link in the description. Remember, I'm saving these up to get myself to the open source conference in San Francisco, and I'd appreciate your help in getting me there, and I'd like to meet you all there too. Thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you all very soon. Bye-bye for now.